Bird nerds, how we doing? Hopefully everyone is uh, having a good week so far. Everything's going good with your birds. They're nice and healthy. You're trying to breed them, you're getting some babies. Um, figured it's been a while since we've done a zebra finch video, so we're gonna we're gonna do a zebra finch video today. Um, now that I ha have some more zebra finches here in, as part of my flock, we'll definitely uh, start highlighting them a little bit more. Um, it's been a little over a year since I've had zebra finches. I have a love-hate relationship with them, and we'll get into that in a little bit as to why. Um, really, zebra finches, they're probably one of the most popular finches in the world. I'd probably put zebra finches and parakeets right next to each other. Doesn't matter what pet store you go into, they usually have at least one bird of each. Uh, so, they're very common, they're from Australia. The reason why I haven't had zebra finches uh, for the last year and a half is I try to house birds that are uh, generally docile and nice. They can commingle, coexist. And for the most part, zebra finches do okay. It's just when they're breeding is when they become a little pushy and a, a little too overly aggressive for my likings. So. That's why I've kind of gone in and out of the zebra finches. I've, I've had and bred zebra finches really my whole life. My dad had them when I was growing up and I've had them off and on. So when I sold my last zebra finches about a year and a half ago, uh, it wasn't to be done with zebra finches, but it was, I, I mostly just had normal wild type and black cheek. Those are very common here in Utah. And I told myself that I wouldn't get any more zebra finches unless they are a, a different mutation. And so um, just some of the mutations that we have of zebra finches, and, and I'll, I'll I'll put a picture up there when, when I say their their mutation, just so you guys can get an idea of one, how many different types there are, and, and two, how pretty some of them look. So you've got your wild type, they've got the orange cheeks, gray body. You've got your black cheeked zebra finches, which it's basically the same colors as a wild type, but instead of the orange, it's replaced with black. So black cheeks and black lights on the side. Oops. I've got pink lemonade out and she just knocked something off the cage. You know that girl? Uh, so <clears throat> those are your two most common types that you'll find in, throughout the world, really. Then there's several other mutation types. You have the Florida Fancy Zebra Finch, which is a beautiful mutation. You have Penguin, which is a beautiful mutation. You have Orange Breasted, which is one of uh, the breeds that I got here. You have Black Faced Zebra Finches, and then you can kind of get into a combination of uh, Black Faced, Black Breasted, black cheek, they call that the triple black. That's what I'm aiming for. And I'll put a picture there so you guys can see that. That's what I'm hoping probably two or three generations down the line, I can get one of those. And I have two English zebra hens on their way that are supposedly split to black cheek. So we'll see um, what we can get going there in hopes that we can kind of get that triple black combination going. And then you can mix and mac, match all of those. You have pied zebras, you have the all white zebras. I mean, there's so many different types. Here in Utah, really, most of those are harder to come by. Um, and so that's why I, I decided to jump at the moment to get some of these uh, different varieties in, in hopes that we could possibly breed some, some cool mutations and be able to share those throughout where I live with other breeders that have been trying to get their hands on some different mutation types of zebra finches and uh, ho hopefully we can kind of grow that population here. So one of the reasons why I did get rid of the zebra finches, like I said before, they are pushy. So it's hard, it's hard to keep them in a, in a colony setting 
with other docile finches. Uh, most of my finches, you know, the goldian finches, canaries, parrot finches, they're pretty docile. My shaft tails, even though they can get a little pushy when they're breeding, for the most part towards other birds are very gentle. And zebra finches, they just tend to get a little overly aggressive, especially when they're breeding. When they're not breeding, they'll be okay. So I think what, I'm, what I will do is when I'm not breeding these guys, I will probably separate the, the sexes and I'll put all my males in one flight and all my females in the other flight in hopes that that'll help uh, eliminate and reduce a lot of the, I guess you could say contention or aggressiveness that come from, from the zebra finches. So I think that we should be pretty good here. I do have all my birds on a rotation. So most of my white breeding cages, which my zebra finches are in currently, I will be swapping those out. My goldian finches are coming into condition. So I will be pairing them up here in a couple months and I'll be putting some of my golden finches in here, some of them in my big built-in built cages that I have my star finches and my borks in. So we'll probably be rotating those out and we'll probably fit the zebra finches in there somewhere as well. So hopefully uh, we'll, we'll get some good breeding success here from them. A couple of the birds look a little older. Um, they're, they're not the the best choice, I guess you could say. Uh, so I hope that I can get some, uh, at least a few babies out of them. Uh, to keep these genes and, and mutations going, I will most likely have to breed the babies back to the parents. That's not something I recommend, uh, just because it, it can cause, it can weaken uh, the, the bloodlines and the, and the birds down the road, uh, but we'll only be doing that to in hopes to replicate and duplicate the genetics that you see on the birds currently. So that's the, the only reason for that. Um, and we will then definitely breed those babies to new bloodlines in hopes to strengthen the birds and their size and colors and all the above. So zebra finches are can be, some people either love them or they hate them. Some people think they're annoying. You can hear their little call there. Sounds like a little annoying squeaky toy. <laughs> uh, other people love them because they're active. They are constantly chirping. Uh, there's very rarely a dull moment with your zebra finches. So I think people do love that about them that they can really just watch them all day and be entertained because they're, they're always curious. They're always wanting to breathe. They're always, talking and, and preening each other and, and you know they're very a very friendly bird which is good for, for those that enjoy their little squeaks <laughs> I guess you could say to breed these guys it's super simple really you just need a male and female most of the mutations the males have the orange cheek patches with the orange flanks and black bar breasts so, across their belly you can see the female here that's up close so she doesn't have any cheek patches she doesn't have any flanks on the side of her belly no black bars on the front of her chest so that's a, a, a female and then your males have those orange cheeks or black cheeks or and the the orange or black flanks on the side so that's a good way to tell your two genders apart zebra finches are super easy to breed they're not picky they'll take any nest box whether it's a wicker basket nest box hole in the wall hole in the tree i mean Really any crevice they can find, they will try and breed in, especially if you have a male and female. So that's something to, to keep in mind there. They are uh, opportunists when it comes to breeding. Um, these two right there is probably the first pair that I'm gonna put together. They both got good size and they both are uh, black face. Just the female has some penguin in her. Uh, the male has got that orange breast and you can see that orange kind of um, reaching back across his neck and quite a bit of orange down on his flanks and breast. So that's what we're hoping to, to breed right there and get some more of. Um, same with that male right there. He's just a little older, so I'm hoping that um, he still has some, some fertility left in him and that we can get some chicks, hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, so... So that's, that's why I, I grabbed the, the zebra finches again. Um, they really are fun birds and fun to have. 
People enjoy them. They're easy to breed. Uh, they can become aggressive and picky, so be careful on who you house them with. In, in a smaller cage like this, I definitely would not house them with other birds as they, they would um, really be the dominant bird and, and would control all, all the others and push them away from food sources and nesting sites, things like that. So, so do be uh, picky on who you breed your zebra finches with just to make sure that you have a, a cohesive group there. Guys, let me know what you think. What comments do you have? What questions do you have about the zebra finches, about breeding them, housing them, genetics, all the above. We'll be doing some more videos on them. So let me know what you think, what you want, and we'll uh, start making some videos of them. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Just wanted to do a quick zebra finch highlight since we haven't done it for quite a while now. Uh, in hopes that those that have zebra finches out there can appreciate this and maybe get some ideas and, and hopefully uh, spark some breeding opportunities for you guys to breed these beautiful birds and or just be able to house them and, and keep them as a pet and uh, enjoy them. So hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.